Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to have a little bit of a look at uh, filter boxes. Those little spaces that you'll sometimes find um, in the middle of the road um, when you're looking to turn right from a major into a minor road. And they're designed uh, and placed there to give you a space where you can wait for oncoming traffic if there is any. Um, but it means that it keeps you out of the way of any traffic coming up behind you and allows uh, traffic to continue following ahead down the road without you holding them up. So, what do they look like? Uh, and how can you kind of work out or predict that there is going to be one of these filter boxes ahead down the road if you're looking to turn right? Um, first of all, I mean, the filter box itself is simply a clear uh, space marked out in the middle of the road, um, but it will be surrounded um, as you approach it and then at the other end of it, um, there will be a set of hatch markings or diagonal uh, white stripes down at the center of the road. Okay, um, now rule 130 in your highway code uh, tells you um, what you can and can't do with these hatch markings and basically if you have a look at the border of the hatch markings, um, if the border is broken, i.e. there is a dotted line around it, um, you should avoid always going into the, into the hatch markings unless it's necessary uh, and unless uh, and as long as it's safe to do so. If it is bordered by a solid white line then the wording changes slightly and you must not go into those uh, hatch markings again unless it is absolutely necessary uh, and safe to do so. So the idea of those hatch markings is to create a bit of a safety bubble around the um, filter box um, to protect you from traffic traveling upwards, uh, forwards and backwards uh, down the road. Um, and so that's actually quite a good way of predicting um, potentially if there is going to be a uh, filter box ahead. So say for instance you're driving down the road and you know that you're going to be turning right either you know the area or your sat nav is telling you that at some point you're going to have to turn right further down the road and you notice that down the middle of the road there is already a strip of uh, hatch markings, these white diagonal lines. So initially at that point it's simply there to keep a bit of space between traffic traveling in opposite directions um, but it's also um, a little bit of a clue that actually if you are going to be turning right um, there may well be a filter box for you to get into. Another little clue possibly is if there are already islands uh, in the road if you see you know you get those little um, sort of concrete islands with the yellow bollards on where quite often you'll see pedestrians using them to cross the road. Um, that quite often will suggest that there may be a uh, filter box coming up ahead. What sort of roads are you likely to find filter boxes in? Well, first of all, the road itself needs to be wide enough to be able to accommodate um, the filter box in the middle of the road. Um, so there should, should be wide enough, obviously, so you can have traffic traveling in one direction, a filter box in the middle, and traffic traveling in an opposite direction. Um, so first of all, you know, have a look and see if the road is, itself is going to be wide enough. But also they tend to be those kind of main arteries into and out of towns where um, there's quite a lot of traffic flowing. Because the idea of the filter box is simply uh, to keep you out of the way of traffic that is traveling ahead so that you don't hold them up. Um, so particularly on those busy routes, um, they will. Uh, chances are there's going to be filter boxes just so it, keep, it maintains the traffic flow. If it's generally a, a, a quieter road, um, then you may well find that it's just a normal right turn without any filter boxes. Our approach to uh, filter boxes is essentially going to be um, the same as we would approach any other right hand turn. However, because we've got the filter box, we need to be a little bit more precise about when we change into second gear. Uh, and I would always recommend that you change to second gear before you arrive at the filter box because at that point, once you arrive at the filter box, um, you will need to have both hands on the steering wheel because you are going to have to steer really quite firmly in order to get your car into the box and then straighten up again. And you don't want to be fiddling around with gear changes as you're doing that. So just make sure that as you approach, you do your usual routine of checking your mirrors, signaling, slowing your car down and aiming to get into second gear before you get into, or before you arrive at the filter box point at which you steer across into the box um, can vary sometimes and, and this is partly down to the fact that 
Um, filter boxes don't come in a single standard size. Some will be quite long and give you plenty of space in order to get into the box, and others will be literally no more than a car's length, uh, which actually makes it quite difficult for you to manoeuvre your car into that space in time. Now, if you can see that you've got a, a nice large filter box, uh, there's plenty of room for you to get into it, then there's no need for you to move across into the hatch markings at all, into those diagonal lines that we talked about earlier. So again, make sure you get your speed down into second gear before you get to the filter box, but wait until that filter box opens up. And then you need to be quite firm with your steering to pull the nose of the car across into the box, but then you also need to make sure that you give yourself time to steer back round to the left in order to straighten your car up so that before you arrive at the point of your right turn, you've got your car parallel to the flow of traffic, parallel to the direction of the road, and you're not sort of sitting at a funny angle across the road. Some filter boxes, however, uh, you will find, um, as I say, are literally just about a car length in space, in, in car's length in distance. Um, so there's not an awful lot of time for you to get into the box, straighten up, and be ready for that right hand turn. So potentially it is possible in these situations that if you see you've got a very short, small um, filter box, you could use some of that space that's covered by the hatch markings to come across just that little bit earlier, already making sure that you're in second gear, of course, but just coming over that little bit earlier, just taking over, just coming over the hatch markings a little bit, just to give yourself that little bit of extra time to get into the box and then get yourself straightened up, ready for that right hand turn. Okay, so let's go for a little bit of a drive, take in some examples of a few filter boxes. Okay, so travelling down this road, I can already see, uh, it's quite a wide road, and down the middle here we've got islands, we've already clearly got marked out that uh, little strip of hatch markings, those diagonal lines, so it, straight away that makes me start to think, if I need to turn right further down here, potentially I'm going to be looking out for a filter box in order to move into that. So we're going to take the second turn on the right, first is here, second is just coming up over the brow of the hill. I'm going to start my routine, check the mirrors, signal, bringing that speed down, looking ahead. Yeah, I can see the filter box just opening up, I'm going to go into second gear nice and early before the box, wait for the hatch markings to clear, and then come sharply across, straighten up so I don't get into the way of the bus. Looking ahead, it's nice and clear for me to go. Continue round. Again, same kind of situation, still got those hatch markings down the road. I'm taking the next right, so I'm going to check the mirrors and signal, bringing that speed down. I can look in ahead, I can see the filter box, I've got plenty of room to get in. Don't need to use the hatch markings, so I'm across, I'm straightening up again. Again, so I'm not in the way of oncoming traffic, still signaling right. Now it's clear. I'm just going to take this first left. So this time, as I approach, just simply got my single line down the middle of the road. I know I'm turning right, so I'm just going to start my routine anyway. So mirrors and signal, and as I approach, actually now I can see those hatch markings open up. So that suggests I've got a filter box. I can see the box coming up, so I'm going to go to drop to second nice and early. I don't need to use the hatch markings because I've got a nice big space in. Straighten up, still signalling right, waiting for that gap. And then it's just a nice swift turn around the corner. Okay, so I'm going to be taking the next road on the right, just up ahead. I can see those hatch markings just opening up in the middle, so the mirror is a signal. But actually I can see there's not a very large space, so I'm going to drop into second. This time I'm going to just come over slightly early into those hatch markings, signal on, there's my little filter box. Come around the corner. So this last one, uh, I'm going to be turning right at the lights, uh, following the signs of the Dover. Okay, so I can see the signs, and actually there's a little arrow on the road also that's just guiding me across into the filter box here. I've got lights as well that are controlling traffic flow. So straight round on the filter light as well. And then picking up speed, ready to join it. 
dual carriage life. So hopefully that's uh, helped a little bit with dealing with uh, filter boxes. Um, just remember, you know, if you are driving down the road, if you're planning on turning right ahead, or if you realise that you've got to turn right, just think to yourself, you know, consider, is this the sort of road where I might expect to find a filter box? Uh, and like I said, you can start to plan and look ahead for it. But also remember to look out for any clues, such as those hatch markings, diagonal lines down the middle of the road, islands, possibly some road signs or arrows on the road guiding you across towards the centre of the road. There. But essentially, treat them the same as you would do for any other ordinary right turn from a major to a minor. But just remember, try to make sure you get yourself into second gear before you get to the filter box so that you can focus on your steering, getting yourself into the space and then straightened up again uh, before you make the turn. OK, so thanks for watching and uh, oh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Cheers.